The mythical hero Odysseus is trying to get back to his wife and son after a decade at war. But this is not the trip home he envisioned. After several weeks at sea, he has lost 72 of his men in an ambush and confronted hurricane winds that pushed him far off course. Now, an unknown island offers a chance to replenish both supplies and morale. Odysseus selects his 12 best men to explore the island with him. Just before he sets off, he grabs one last item, a goatskin full of wine. It will prove to be a lifesaver. Priority number one for the explorers is to find something to eat. Just offshore, the men hit the jackpot. They come across a cave filled with food. Only one thing is missing, the cave's owner. When they get into the cave, Odysseus's men see wonderful stores of food, and they're ready to steal it and take off and get out of danger. Odysseus, though, is very curious. He wants to stick around. He thinks that the person that lives there should owe him a gift. And this is traditional in ancient Greek society, that a person who arrives as a stranger on someone else's shores is owed a gift. When a stranger shows up in your town, um, you take him in, you give him a place to rest, you give him food, you treat him kindly. Inside the cave, Odysseus and his men help themselves to a long-awaited feast. As the sun sets, the man of the house finally returns. But he is not what the sailors were expecting. He is a giant cyclops. A ravenous beast with the strength of 20 men and one massive eye in the middle of his face. The sight of him sends Odysseus and his men cowering into a dark corner. The Cyclops lights his nightly fire and the men are exposed. When the Cyclops arrives home, he sees that these men have come in to steal his food. He's angry. And then Odysseus steps up and kind of beats his chest and says, hello, we've just arrived from faraway lands. Where's our gift? And he's being a little bit rude too. So you can kind of see how the Cyclops is a little bit miffed. This has all just gone terribly wrong. In the blink of an eye, the Cyclops lunges forward, grabs two of the sailors and devours them. He leaves not a morsel behind, not even the bones. When the Greeks see the Cyclops eat two of their fellow Greeks, they're shocked, they're frightened. Cannibalism in ancient Greece was an incredibly barbarous act. For them, a, a mark of a civilized person was actually the way they ate and drank. The men are terrified. They're also frustrated with Odysseus for leading them into this ungodly mess. And they decide, well, while he's asleep, let's kill him. But Odysseus, fortunately, is the smartest guy in the bunch. And he says, we can't kill him. Odysseus has a problem. If the sailors, if Odysseus, kill the Cyclops now, they'll be trapped within the cave because they are not strong enough to move the stone on their own. On the other hand, if the men don't kill the Cyclops, they will surely die. It is a hopeless situation. But Odysseus has overcome too much to give up now. If he can't use his strength to beat this monster, he'll use his intelligence. At sunrise, the Cyclops devours two more men. Then he heads out to graze his sheep, sealing the cave behind him. Time is running out for Odysseus. The mastermind of the Trojan horse desperately needs a new stroke of genius, and fast. <laughs> 